What's going on, guys? Ross here from Consolidata. It has been a hot minute since we've made a video, and that is because I was in New York for the last week, and we've had a lot of um, updates that have been coming out, so this video is long past due. Now, if you are watching this now, and you go look here, uh, I encourage you to watch these videos to build your bot, to set up your bot, because um, these were when we first launched and hooking it up inside of Go High Level has not changed. Nothing else that you need to know there. Um, building your uh, assistant, nothing has changed there. But there have been some updates on our side, uh, on the consolidated side. So I want to go through these with you in detail. We're not going to necessarily go through setting up workflows because that was all in the other videos. And it's literally a very simple workflow. Um, the only thing that I will say is that if you've been having any trouble trying to get your bot to respond, there's only two reasons why that could be the case. Either your open AI account isn't set up properly, meaning it's not funded because you have to put credits on it, or you haven't used the right open API key, or your go high level API, there's something on that side. Uh, so you might want to just re-add that source and use it. The other thing could be if you have other automations with inside your Go High Level account that are canceling out this one. But uh, we're going to go and uh, talk about a few changes. You'll notice that since the last video, AI Chatbot is now actually in our um, navigational menu rather than inside our Dash Hub. And that just is so that way it's easier to find. But we've also got a lot of new things going on over here. So I'm going to go through what all these things are me so i'm going to go ahead and open this up we'll hit add an automation and i'm going to go through what each one of these things mean and how they work so that way you guys can set them up in your own go high level account now one thing i want to mention is that the way that we have this thing set up is it's going to pull in data from your go high level account however if you are using a go high level account from an api key from months ago you need to add that source again. You don't need to redo all your dashboards. Just go add it again. And you can even just put like bot next to it. And the reason for that is because we've requested new permission scopes. So under sources here, you'll choose whichever uh, agency location you want, and then you'll pull in uh, your available locations. Now, if you don't wanna choose a calendar, you don't have to, but whatever calendar you choose, this is going to be the one that it's going to be booking appointments on. Now, I want to talk about booking appointments for a minute because uh, one of the issues that some people have when they are um, trying to book appointments is to say, well, how does it know when to book an appointment? Well, there's two ways that you can do it. One is if you followed my instructions on building a prompt, it's step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this, then it would just be step four, book the appointment. So then you can put it in there or help them find a time that works for the appointment. The other way is you can just put a prompt in there that says, listen to the user's intent. And when you feel like they're ready to book an appointment, start booking the appointment. It's that easy to do that. So the next thing that you'll want to do is um, figure out how do you want to handle this when there's human takeover? So I'll give you an example. Right now, if a bot uh, were to reply and then a customer replies and you're wanting to get in and start messaging, the problem is, is that the bot's going to keep replying. So if you're typing and the bot's replying, the person's going to think you're crazy because it's going to not look right. So what you want to do is have a way to set it up to where you can shut the bot off. Now, by default, if you do not add any sort of tag or anything in here, when you assign a user to a to a opportunity, it's going to shut the bot off. But if you're like, no, I, I want there you to be able to have an assigned user and the bot to go then what you're going to do is just set up a tag inside of your um, go high level you could call it human whatever and then whatever that you're going to need to go refresh your sources so it pulls that tag in and then you're going to choose that tag in here and now if an opportunity has that tag it will not send it to open ai it will not keep replying on there for you so it's really easy to do it that way. Now, um, if you don't have a tag, it's going to do it when there's an assigned user. Now, to, just to give you a few ideas, you could set something up to where uh, when you drag it over into another pipeline stage, it adds the tag. Um, Jason Rule has a tool out there right now 
that when you do an outgoing text message manual, you could have it add a tag. We're going to be working on a similar function for that soon as well. But the idea is, is when the tag is added, then it won't reply anymore. Now, the other thing that we've added now is custom fields. Now, just by default, it is going to update name, phone number, address, email address. So like if it picks up that there's a name or an email address inside of here and you don't have it inside of your Go High Level account, it's going to automatically update it. And if it's not, let us know because there might be a, a use case that for some reason that it didn't do it, and then it can help us dial it in. But it's supposed to automatically pick that up. Another thing you can now do is you can put in your prompt, if possible, use their first name or use their name when speaking to them initially. And it'll actually read data now from Go High Level as well, which is really cool. But the way custom fields works is that you're you're going to select, for instance, I could select revenue, industry, employees, uh, whatever. And then I could put in my step, you know, in my flow, okay, now find out what the revenue is and update it in the appropriate custom field. That would be in the prompt. Find out how many employees they have and update it in the appropriate custom field for employees. Find out what niche they are in and update it. In the, and that's how you would do that. And now as you're asking those questions, it's going to automatically be listening for it and then it's just going to update it. So it's that easy to do it. So, uh, and you can select multiple custom fields in here, as you see. So you just click on the ones that you want. Now for the time zone, the reason why this is important is because if the times that it'll say like, oh, there's no slots available, but there is slots available, or maybe it didn't book it properly, it has 95% of the time had to do with the time zone. And what that means is that let's say that um, you are set to central time zone and your person is also in central time zone, it doesn't know they're in central time zone. And so you would actually have to ask them in the prompt, like figure out what time zone they're in. And then it would know, and then it could do the math and book it for you. Well, now we've changed it to make it easy. So now if you set a time zone, it is not going to ask them for a time zone. So for instance, if you choose central uh you know, central time zone, and you were to go in here and look at like America, let's just say you were to look at Chicago or something like that to put it in uh, central time zone uh, right here. Now it is going to know that all your prospects are in central time zone. And this is handy if you're doing this for a small business that does not work globally. So if I'm a chiropractor, I just need it to book in my area. I'm not booking global appointments. However, if you are a company that works nationwide, set it to user preferred, and then it's going to ask them, what time zone are you in? And by doing that, it will then book it in the appropriate time zone because now it's going to translate it to whatever time zone is set inside of your Go High Level account. Then you're going to add your open AI API key, your assistant ID, you save it, bada bing, bada boom, and you are done. That is all you have to do then. So then you save it. Now, let's say that you're like, okay, um, for some reason, I'm getting an error message. I don't know what that means. You can now click on this, and it's going to show you your statuses. And if there is a status that is not set up, then you're going to be able to see what the error was. It'll tell you. And it might be that it's your open AI or whatever, but at least you'll be able to know. One other thing I wanted to mention is if you create a custom field called thread ID, it's automatically going to put your thread ID inside of there. So that way you can go in and just search these by thread ID, and then you can see what's going on. Um, usually, like I said, it, it's either some, there's another automation firing that's canceling out your open AI. You can just see uh, what other workflows it's in. That's easy to fix or your open AI key needs to, you need to make sure that it's either updated, not, not been deleted and has funds attached to it. And then the other thing would be just make sure that your go high level API key is fresh. So with that said, that is pretty much everything that you need to know for building out your bot. Now, if you guys are still like, I just need more help. We have our bulletproof bots class. You can get that when you go to consolidated.ai. You'll see courses, and then you'll see that. 
and you can uh, log in and watch that class as well. Okay, guys, I appreciate you. We've got a lot of other updates coming over the next couple weeks, so please stay tuned. Have an awesome day.